McClinathan exploded onto the top fuel scene with an amazing top 10 finish in his rookie season. Right out of the box, this top fuel sensation punched through the four second barrier. Corey is a hard charging drag racer with a tough experienced crew. And if he keeps going at this pace, he could go all the way to the top in top fuel. If you are a drag racing fan and have dreamt of racing top fuel, a walk through the pits on race day makes that dream seem near impossible. Like all major sports in the 90s, being a winner means not only having exceptional ability, but also having access to money and lots of it. One look at the array of million dollar operations that boast top-notch crews and state-of-the-art trailers emblazoned with the names of legendary drivers and their corporate benefactors is intimidating. Corey McLenathan took this walk many times when he was racing his Carmen Ghia funny car. Then one day, near the end of the 1990 season, he decided that to realize his dreams in racing, he had to take the plunge into top fuel. I think it's the rush. I mean, it doesn't last very long, but to go four 90s or five, five flat and a quarter mile, you know, speeds over 280, close to 290, 290 miles an hour, that's, it's unbelievable. It's something you can't explain. You have to do it to understand it. Ever since Corey was little, he has been fascinated by speed. Inspired by the likes of Don Garlitz and Eddie Hill, he decided to become involved in racing alcohol funny cars and dragsters. Alcohol dragster was pretty nice, and they, they're fast. You know, they run the 6.0s, but there's nothing like a top fuel car. I mean, let's face it, it's, it's the pro category. That's where I wanted to be. And I wanted to race with the big boys. And I mean, it's just something I dreamed about all my life. And once I got in one, I'd never, I would never go back. Backing Corey is his family. Even before he entered Top Fuel, Corey and his family worked as a team, building, maintaining, and racing a series of cars known as the Mack Attack. My sister works on the car. My grandfather works on the car. My mom and dad travel with us to every race. It's just, it's something that most families can't do. And I'm, is really happy we can do it all together. Yeah. Um, everybody gets along really good, and we have to hire four or five guys to work with us, and it's hard to get a team together that stays together and works well together. And I feel this year we'll, we'll do just fine. Even with the subsidized help of family and friends, the expense of travel and competition allows Corey to participate in only 10 of the 18 race series. Normally runs me about $3,000 a run. That's the way I got to figure it. Yeah. And that covers every, all my expenses, truck, trailer, crew, everything. My parents put a lot of money into this, and it's, this is a family-run organization. And uh, you need, almost need a major sponsorship to run a full 19 events and with the uniforms and do everything the right way. And we're going to run 10 or 12 races and see if we can't come up with a sponsor to keep going. But it's a, it's a financial drain. I mean, it just costs a lot of money to run a top fuel car. On the track, Corey has made a smooth transition from alcohol funny cars to top fuel. The first few times down the, down the strip was, was the learning process, believe me. It's, you launch one of these a couple times and you gain some respect right away from the cars. Um, alcohol dragster, you drive it. With these cars, they drive you, basically is what happens. You're on there for the ride. You know, if something happens, you gotta, be, you gotta react quickly. But other than that, you're, you're in a, like a misguided missile. I mean, as long as you point it the right way and nothing goes wrong, it's going to be fine. But if something happens, you've got to be ready for it. In the early rounds of the 1991 season, he distinguished himself as a contender by clocking sub-five-second runs. It was just one of those freak deals. Everything came together, and it went, we were at 498, and I was happy as could be. You know, I was glad it was over. And we were fortunate enough to run, you know, three or four of them again after that. And it's just... It's something everybody wants to do, and once you've done it, it's like a big load off your mind. And, you know, getting it done and over with, that's what you want to do. The acceleration of running low ETs and making himself a competitor to be reckoned with is only part of the story. There have also been some days, like the World Finals at Pomona, when things went horribly wrong. The magnetos went bad, and it crossfired and blew the blower off of it, but it still hung on. The, the motor was still running, and the throttle was stuck. So grab for the fuel shutoffs, and that usually will stop the fuel of the motor, and it'll quit. Well, the shutoffs were blew off the front of the motor, and I couldn't shut anything off. So basically, all I had left was brakes and parachutes, and about half track, they all failed too. So 
It was just one of those freak deals where you just hang on, hope for the best. With his car in ruins, Corey and his family had no alternative but to start all over again from scratch with a new Mac attack. This is kind of a brand new product, basically. Everybody's got their own product out every year, the Yohara car, and this is a Hadman car. And it's a lot different than some of the, like what Kenny runs, Al Swindell deal. And uh, we're extremely happy with it so far. One of the most striking features of Corey's new car is the paint scheme. We wanted something a little bit more wild, a little bit different, something no one's ever had before. And the checkered flag deal is something that I thought looked real racy. And I mean, it looks like it's going 100 mile, 100 mile an hour while it's sitting there. Corey is hoping that with his new car and a bit of luck, he can put up a good enough showing to attract major sponsors. With the drivers of the caliber of Amato, McEwen, and Verdome on the starting line, that task seems formidable. It's intimidating. <laughs> I mean, when you come up next to someone like Garlitz or Perdome, Kenny Bernstein, Daryl Gwynn, I mean, Daryl's car runs extremely well, and you just got to take that into consideration. To me, it makes you want to beat him that much more. I mean, you need to prove yourself out here. That's what it's all about. Like every racer, Corey dreams of being a champion. But for this season, he would happily settle for a top five finish. Make it a good show this year, what we can, and try to get a major sponsor for next year. I like to promote somebody else, you know. I feel we got a good chance as anybody else to do well this year.